Welcome to Growing Deeper. I'm Reverend Michael Jakes. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10 that the Spirit searches the deep things of God. On our program, it is our desire to bring you to those deep places through a careful study and inspection of God's Word. So join us right now as we grow deeper in the Word of God. May God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. On our broadcast today, I'd like to address several myths and misconceptions about the devil. Because there is much misinformation uh, about this particular subject, uh, whether it's by ignorance, uh, by, uh, by reason of just not understanding. Uh, there are many things about Satan uh, that are believed and taught and 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 lived by uh but we want to take time today and shed some light and at the same time bring correction in this matter uh of the devil uh we know the basics about the devil uh we know that uh we know that he is present already in the garden of eden uh, when we open up the Bible in the book of Genesis, we know that he's there through the serpent. Uh, but throughout scripture, uh, there is a pattern uh, concerning the devil and what he can and cannot do. And unfortunately, uh, due to whether it be media, whether it be movies and TV and things like that, people have this this sort of wrong, warped idea about Satan, for instance, that his power is matched with God, or that he has equal power with God, and this could not be further from the truth. So we want to take time on this broadcast just to shed some light, bring correction, and to talk about the limitations of Satan. For one thing, let's start here. There are many who say that Satan is in hell and he reigns in hell. He is the king of hell, so to speak. Or at least he is in control of it. Well, the truth of the matter is that Satan does not reign in hell. Satan has never been to hell. Uh, but he does want to reign in our lives. We find that in 1 Peter 5, 8 where it says that he walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We also find some insight into this into this uh, idea of where Satan is uh, when we read the book of Job. When he comes before, uh, he comes before God with the rest of the angels in Job chapter one, and God addresses him, and he addresses him. By simply asking him, where has he been and what has he been doing? It says in Job 1, six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Okay, Satan himself being an angel, a fallen angel, he, as it seems to be saying in this verse, he still had some type of access to the throne of God. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So that tells us the part of the realm and scope of the devil and what he does and where he is. The Bible also talks about in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places or in the heavenly places. So that's talking about uh, an area above our heads in the atmosphere, unseen by us, that there dwells evil, evil in the atmosphere. And so this also is the is is part of the devil's realm. So he walks up and down in the earth, going to and fro in it, and he inhabits the atmosphere. But nowhere do we read, nowhere in scripture do we read that Satan is in hell. 
Okay. Now, hell is not his castle, uh, but it will eventually be uh, his final resting place. We read in the book of uh, Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 10 says very clearly, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that is the final resting place, so to speak, of the devil. That's where he will eventually be. But as of right now, he is not there. He has never been there. But he also knows that's where he will be. Okay, he knows where he is going. So rest assured that the devil is not in hell and he will not be there until a future date where God will personally, personally place him there. All right, now the next a myth or misconception uh, about the devil that we want to talk about is the fact that Satan does whatever he pleases. Or in other words, Satan is sovereign. In other words, he has a will and a power and he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. And also now that it, that cannot be further from the truth. The devil does not have power to do whatever he wants to do. He is limited. Okay. The devil is limited. Uh, the devil, so to speak, is on a leash. Okay? And in many ways, in many ways, the devil is like, he is like a puppet on a string. The devil is like a puppet on the string? Yes. In many ways, he is like a puppet on the string. Let me bring you back to the book of Job uh, in chapter 1. Uh, where God addresses Satan and says, Has, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and, and puts down evil? And Satan answered uh, the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? And Job makes his case that uh, if it were not for God, that Job would curse him to his face. Uh, if you put forth your hand, and you take away what he has, that, you know, he will, he will curse you. Uh, and God tells him in verse 12, Behold, all that he has is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. And Satan went away from the presence of the Lord. So what was he saying? God told Satan, okay, I give you permission. You have power over what he has, but do not touch his body. In other words, he is giving Satan specific instructions and Satan cannot say no. Okay. He is telling Satan what he can do. We read later on in the next chapter, uh, we read, and once again, uh, God tells Job, uh, tells Satan rather, uh, Look at my servant Job. There is none like him. He is perfect and an upright man. He fears me, and he does not do evil. And Satan again says, All that a man hath, he will give for his life. But put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. See, all right now, touch his body now. If you touch his body, he will curse you, and he will put you down. The Lord says, and the Lord says to Satan in verse number six, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Once again, more specific instructions from God telling the devil what he can and cannot do. You can do this, but you cannot do that. So that simply tells us that Satan is not, he is not sovereign. He cannot do what he pleases. He is only used he is used by God to accomplish his purposes. Now, I know that's a difficult concept to understand, that God would, use, would do such a thing. But God will use the evil, the wickedness, the bad intentions of the devil to bring about his good. 
Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Okay? Let me go into another misconception. And we've already touched on it. On it that Satan has equal power with God. There could be nothing further from the truth. The devil does not have equal power with God. Remember that the devil is created. He is a created being. He is a creature. And obviously God would not create a creature greater than himself or with more power than himself or even equal power with himself. Okay? He, his power has been allotted to him, delegated to him, and has been given to him. Okay? Now, he is more powerful than you and me, but he is not more powerful than God. Okay? He is more powerful than you and me without Christ. Now, with Christ. Okay, now we're talking on another level here. With Christ in me, okay, living and working through me, as long as I am living in obedience to Christ and relying on the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, then I stand up and I am able to stand against the devil in Jesus' name, okay, in Jesus' name, not on my own, not on my own, okay? Devil's not omnipotent, which means the devil does not have all power, okay? He can be resisted. He can be resisted. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So he, he does not do anything that he what, that we cannot get away from. He can be resisted. We do not have to do what he says. Okay. Now, he gives the impression that he has all power. He gives the impression that he can do anything he wants to do. What he does, he uses his network, so to speak, of demons to accomplish his work, to do his bidding. Okay, he needs he needs these demons. And how many demons are there? Millions, billions of demons. The Bible talks about a third of the demons being thrown down from heaven during a rebellion. We don't know how many were originally there, so we don't know how we do not know how many a third is. But there are countless demons at work in this world that give Satan the look of having so much more power than he does have. So he does gain access into this world, okay? And we'll touch on that in a little bit. Another misconception is that Satan creates demons. Satan creates demons. Satan does not create demons. Satan does not have the power to create. Only God can create. Okay? Uh, he uses demons to carry out his bidding, as we have just said. Um, so, he does not create anything at all. The devil gains entry into a life through carnal Christianity, through worldly people, through ignorance in Christianity or ignorant people. He gains access through carelessness, through, through careless living, he gains access into a life, okay? And those that are totally given over to him and have opened up their life to him, he will, and he will use rather demons uh, to, to possess them, to possess them, okay? But once again, uh, the situation has to be right and the individual has to be, has to be susceptible and open to it for it to happen but we must not we must not dabble we must not play around with the things uh of the devil we we, we cannot do it the next uh, myth is that satan is self-existent in other words he causes he causes himself to be this is not true the devil was created created by god Okay, now let me even go back and, and 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 clarify what I just said. God created Lucifer. Okay, the Bible talks about Lucifer being the son of the morning or an angel of light. God created Lucifer. Okay, and Lucifer was the morning star, and many say that because of it what he was and, and how he is described in Ezekiel and Isaiah, uh, that he 
that he uh, he was an archangel. Okay, he was an archangel, a chief angel. Okay, so there was power and there was beauty attached to him. Uh, but the Bible says very clearly that because of because pride rose up in him because of his appearance, he decided that he would lift up himself above God, and obviously God would have none of that. Uh, so he is not self-existent. He does not exist on his own, and there will come a time when he will not be here. Okay, but I mean, that is yet, yet future. But, but he does not cause himself to be, and he will not be uh, the one who decides when he leaves. God will handle him in the end. Okay, so remember that the devil was created by God to accomplish his purposes. And I keep saying the devil was created by God, and I have to keep going back and correcting myself. He created Lucifer. Uh, who through sin and pride and rebellion became or morphed into who we now know as Satan, okay? But does Satan know and remember the goodness that he had in heaven? Does he remember the face of God and being in his presence? <laughs> no doubt he does. And this is one reason why he stands so opposed to people, to the people of God, uh, whether it's jealousy or just anger and, and just complete, complete bitterness and hatred. Uh, we don't know that, that that is rather that is the reason why, but he does not have it in for you for good. Okay. He, he wants, he wants your life and he will destroy your life if he has that chance. And that's the next misconception about Satan, very common misconception, is that he is everywhere. He is everywhere, okay? So the fact is that Satan is not omnipresent, which means all places at all times. Only God is everywhere at all times, okay? Uh, Jesus said that if I go away, I will send you a comforter. Jesus said that if I do not go away, uh, then the comforter cannot come, uh, and he will be with you, and he will be in you. The Holy Spirit is everywhere at all times. While you listen to us right now, the Holy Spirit is here. He is a silent listener to all that goes on. And at any given time, the Holy Spirit is present. Where you go, he is. Where you go, he is there. The Holy Spirit is present at all places. Okay, His presence. And if you are a child of God and His presence is in you, you take Him with you where you go. Okay, so the devil is not so. Okay, Satan is not everywhere. Now, here we go again. Satan gives the impression of being any, everywhere because of the network of demonic uh, help that he has. There are so many demons that inhabit the atmosphere and that are also walking up and down and to and fro on this world, that he gives the impression that he uh, is everywhere. The fact is that you and I probably have never had any one-on-one -on -one contact with the devil himself, personally, okay? Uh, Satan saves himself for, <laughs> for more important people than us. I believe that Satan saved himself for world leaders and of such such people like that. Uh, but you and I have have not come in contact directly and personally with Satan himself. But we have we have undergone oppression. We have we have uh, been in the presence of of evil from demonic sources, but not from Satan himself. Okay, he can only be in one place at one time. Remember, he is a created being. Just that, like you and I are created beings, we can only be in one place at one time. I know sometimes you would like to be here and be there at the same time, but that's not the case. You are where you are right now. Okay, Satan is only in one place at one time. 
and he cannot duplicate himself. But once again, he has the help of myriads of evil spirits that are at his beck and call. Okay, next, the fact that Satan can read your mind. Okay, it is a myth. Satan cannot read your mind, uh, but what he does know how to do is to be very patient and to watch. And once again, you and I have probably not encountered Satan himself, but these demons, these evil spirits, they watch us, they listen to us, they hear our conversations, they see our actions, and based on our actions, based on our actions, they have a plan of attack against us. They can notice patterns, they can see your weaknesses, and they will attack accordingly. Okay? So, we have to be very careful what we say. We have to be very careful what we do, because evil spirits, demons, I believe they are outlining a plan of attack for us. Okay? So, we want to make sure that we don't give them the information that they are longing for so that they can try and have an upper hand against us. Okay, so let's be very careful about that. Satan cannot read your mind. He does not know what you are thinking. Okay, but he has seen what you have done. He has seen what you have done over and over again. And so based upon that, he will know how to tempt you. Okay? He will know how to tempt you. Next is the fact that Satan knows your future. No, Satan does not know your future. Okay? Technically, he does not know your future. Now, what he does know, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, is that if you are a child of God, he knows that heaven is the place where you are supposed to go. But he is dead set against it, and he wants to make sure that you don't go there. He wants to do everything within his power to keep you from going there or from keeping you from serving God, okay? The only future he knows for sure is his own. He knows, Revelation 20 and verse 10. He is very aware of it. Even as I speak, he is very aware of it. He is very aware that he will be bound for a thousand years in a future date. He knows this, what the book of Revelation says concerning him. Okay, so he knows his final demise. You see, Satan knows the truth, but there's no truth in him. He is a liar. He is the father of lies. And that's what he is. He can only be what he is. Knowing truth and living in truth are two different things. He will never live in truth. He can never come to the truth. Okay? Uh, but that does not excuse him from knowing. He knows the truth. But this truth for him will not set him free. It cannot set him free. Okay? He is set on a collision course for hell. Okay? He will go there. He will go there. Okay? Okay? So those are the major, major misconceptions concerning Satan, okay? Uh, there's one other one. There's one other one, very important one. Satan forces people to sin. And this is also not true. Satan does not force people to sin, okay? Uh, hence the idea the devil made me do it. No, the devil does not make. The devil does not make anyone do anything. Okay? He tempts, he coerces, he entices, he baits, but he cannot force transgression. He cannot make you do what you don't want to do. I've even, heard, I've even heard it put this way, that he makes suggestions. He suggests to you that you do certain things. 
And when he whispers, when these evil spirits whisper in our ear, when we hear them speaking in our spirit, we have a choice to make. I believe we know when we hear evil speaking to us. And let me make also one other, uh, one other, uh, bring one other thought out. The fact that Satan tempts us uh, does not mean that every single time that we are about to do something wrong, that the devil is involved in it. Now, technically, yes, the devil is the bringer of evil, but remember that you and I, you and I, uh, are sinful creatures. And if it were not for Christ, if it were not for Jesus, uh, we would have no desire to live for God or to do God's will. And the devil, though his presence is real, and these evil spirits, their presence is real, you and I have enough evil within us to accomplish and to do sinful things without the help of the devil. Okay? What I'm saying is that there is not a demon under every tree. Do not believe there's a demon of this and a demon of that and a demon of this and a demon of everything. You have enough evil in you. The Bible says that the heart, in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? So our hearts are wicked. We are full of wickedness. David said that he was David said that he was conceived that he was conceived in sin. So we have sin in us. We have that sin nature in us. The book of Romans uh talks about it. Read Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7 and even some of chapter 8 and you will see the sin nature where Paul speaks about his own experience and he says the things that I want to do I don't do and the things that I that I do are the things that I don't want to do. So he says there's another power at work in him. He's not talking about he was possessed or anything like that. He's saying the sin nature in him, his own sin nature, sometimes seems to, to just to just to lead him and bait him into sin. The sin nature. So there needs to be the needs that there's a cloak, there's a connection. But let's not get that much twisted that the devil is responsible for every single thing. He is responsible for much, maybe the majority. But once again, you and I have a sin nature. And sometimes the devil is able to latch on to that sin nature and cause us to do some things. And sometimes we just do some things because we just do some things. Because we want to. Now, we can't blame the devil. We can't say the devil made me do it. We can't say it was all his fault. We have to look and say it was my fault that I did or said or whatever it was. We give the devil his due. Okay? We don't give him any props. We know what he's all about. The Bible says do not be ignorant of his devices. Okay? We need to know our enemy. So, I've just taken this time on this broadcast just to sort of bring correction and, and, and talk about some of the limitations of the devil and these common misconceptions. And on another broadcast, we will speak about what exactly he does in the believer's life and what we ourselves can do about it. But until that time, this is Reverend Michael Jakes. Thanks for joining us today.